Today is the second video of the small tutorial series that I'm doing in collaboration with Morfolio Trace. If you have not watched the first video, I will leave it down in the description of this video. There's also a dedicated playlist for the entire tutorial series. So if you don't wanna miss on that, make sure that you are subscribed to my channel and also subscribe to Morfolios. They have so many useful tutorials if you're wanting to master Morfolio Trace and to become a better designer. Without further ado, let's get into the tutorial. Okay, so we are here on Morfolio Trace. To the left, you have uh, different menus and on the top right, you have other options. If you click on this icon, you can hide the menu or just make it visible. For now, we're just gonna create a new uh, project and we're gonna do a custom size. Uh, whatever size you wanna use is okay. I typically go with 18 by 24 or 24 by 36 because uh, that's what I'm used to, but you can choose whatever size you want. What I wanna do now is I want to import the image of my existing floor plan, the floor plan that I'm gonna be working with. So I'm gonna click on this little icon and go to my library and bring in uh, my floor plan. You can uh, resize it and I would normally just make it the size of the page. Uh, of course, that this is not to scale and we're gonna fix that in just a moment. So to change the scale, uh, what you wanna do is you wanna use the scale tool. The scale tool is this little icon at the top and you will see this dimension line uh, showing up. So the only thing that you need to do is you need to know at least one dimension of your floor plan. So for example here, I know that my entry door is three feet in width. So I will just position my dimension scale as if I am dimensioning this door and I will input the size, which is three feet, which I am already familiar with. So once I click on the check mark, it'll be to scale. I can double check that by using my ruler and just moving it to where uh, the door is. If you double click on it, you can change the orientation of it. So I'm just gonna put it there and you can see that this is three feet. So this is just to double check that I did everything correctly because it would be a disaster to have the wrong scale. I also know that in my master bedroom, uh, my length is 12 or 13 feet, something like that. So yeah, it is 13 feet. So I'm just double checking that because I already knew of that uh, measurement. So this is just really to double and triple check that everything will be uh, to scale. So now I have my floor plan. This is the existing floor plan and this is what we're gonna be working with. So what I wanna do is I wanna create a new layer by clicking on this little icon. And once I create a new layer, you will see that uh, the layer has certain opacity. So it changes uh, the visibility of your floor plan. So we can always change that. We can bring the opacity all the way down. We can also change the color of the layer. This is really up to you. Or you can also change the opacity of your floor plan. And this is really just so that you can draw your walls and your image is not in the way. So whenever you draw your lines, I'm gonna use my pencil or just any marker. Uh, for now, I'm just gonna use this marker in a black color. And then I'm gonna try to just test how that would look. Uh, you can do freehand like I am doing right now, or you can also use the ruler. So when I'm doing this type of floor plans, I normally like to use the ruler for the walls and some other elements like the doors, I will do freehand. But for the walls, I like to uh, make them straight using the ruler. So. You can see I'm just here trying the tool just to show you how it works. You just have to activate the ruler and then whatever line you draw will be drawn uh, vertical or horizontal in a straight line or also at 45 angle degrees. So I'm gonna activate it again. I can place it anywhere, uh, it doesn't really matter. And then whenever you draw a line, it's gonna be completely straight. Uh, vertical or horizontal. I think this is a bit too thick, so I'm gonna change the thickness of my marker 
and I think this is better. So it's really a matter of you trying uh, different thicknesses, different uh, line weights to see what works for you and what you are uh, happier with. So I'm just gonna go ahead and draw all the outlines for my walls. And one thing that you wanna make sure you do is that you want all your lines to connect to each other. So you don't wanna leave any open gaps between your lines because later we're gonna be filling in uh, the inside of our walls. So we're gonna be hatching them. And if you do not have like a closed loop uh, within your lines, then it's gonna be really hard for you to fill in those walls. Uh, with a solid color. So probably this is not making much sense right now, but we're gonna get back to this. So just make sure that when you are drawing your lines, your edges are, your lines are touching each other so that you make uh, a closed loop with your uh, line work. Okay, so I have just finished creating the outline for all of my walls. So I'm just turning my uh, floor plan layer off just to show you. And as you can see here in the kitchen, I didn't really add the walls that are in the middle of the kitchen because those are gonna be removed anyway for my new proposed floor plan. So you can add them, but then you would have like an existing floor plan and then you would have to create a new floor plan, but I'm just doing a new floor plan with the new uh, proposed design. So I'm just gonna remove the walls that are not gonna be there in the final design anyway. So this is what I was telling you about. You see how here we have an open gap. That is gonna be a problem when we try to fill in uh, the, the, uh, the wall. So we're just gonna make sure that we close those gaps uh, just to avoid any problems with our hatching. Okay, so now we're gonna use the hatch tool to hatch our walls. So we're gonna choose a color. I typically use gray. And then you see this little circle tool. So if I place it anywhere and then it's not within a closed loop, it's gonna color the entire thing. So this is what I was telling you about that it will be a problem if you do not close all of your lines. So, so I'm gonna do it in a different section where I know that my walls are completely in a closed loop. So let me just show you how that would look. So you see here in this section of wall, I closed all of my lines, so it's actually working. So now you just wanna click on the paint bucket tool to kind of like confirm your selection and your walls will be filled in. So you just have to click on the bucket uh, after you position your uh, tool on the part that you want your wall to be filled in. I hope this is making sense, guys. If you have any questions, just drop them down in the comment section below. And you wouldn't wanna fill in the windows because otherwise they would be uh, solid walls. So when we are making floral plants, our windows would be either another very light color, whether that's blue or yellow, uh, everyone uses a different color, or you can just leave it white because it's a window. So it really is an opening that you should know that it's there. Okay, so I have finished hatching all my walls. And remember that the hatching you wanna do on a new layer, uh, you don't wanna do this on the same layer that you did the outline for the walls, just uh, because if you make a mistake, uh, you may wanna delete that altogether and you don't want your line work, uh, your outline to go away with that layer. So everything you wanna do it in a separate layer, keep that in mind, it's just a better workflow and a more organized way of working. So now I'm going ahead and just adding the doors, the windows, the little details. For these little details, I always like to do freehand sketching because I think that it just looks a little bit more organic, a bit more freehand, I don't know, I feel like it gives it that artistic look. Um, 
probably uh, I'm not making any sense here but <laughs> I just like this feel and uh, I love doing my my doors with freehand techniques so I'm just gonna go ahead and add all the doors for my floor plan Okay, so now we're moving into the space planning of this kitchen, which is really the fun part. So even when you're doing uh, sketches and rough uh, line work for your space planning, uh, you want to make sure that you're drawing to scale. So you can see how I'm still using the ruler, making sure that the dimensions are correct. My island is going to be three feet in length or width, and it's probably going to be uh, six or nine feet in length. Uh, I haven't really decided that yet, but right now I'm just playing with different options uh, for the kitchen island. And you can do this with freehand sketches, like you don't have to use the ruler at all if you don't need to. Uh, but uh, I would recommend you to use the ruler at some point because it's going to give you a more accurate representation of the sizes uh, in the space. So. I'm doing here some space planning for the living room, which is going to be adjacent to the patio. Uh, so we're thinking to have a bit of a symmetrical design with probably two sofas on each side and maybe some uh, lounge chairs. So really it's just brainstorming of ideas. I really love this process of interior design because it's really where everything starts to take place. And here at the entry, we're going to change things a little bit. As you can see, originally uh, there was or there is an office there at the entry, which was a closed office. So we're going to open that up and we're just going to leave some uh, desk space uh, next to the kitchen so that uh, the residents of this home can still work, but without necessarily having to be inside of an office. So just some space for doing some work which I think it's a great idea to open up the space and make this home feel a little bit more open and a bit more modern because nowadays the needs have changed a lot of people and some people do not necessarily need an office. So of course that we're going to have a dining table and I am proposing to change the orientation. Originally it was like a horizontal layout, but I'm proposing to change it to a vertical layout and here on this door, I kind of want to have like this access to the garage so that if they come with groceries, they can instantly just take them to the kitchen. So in this part of a wall that I have highlighted with red, I want to have like an opening and probably we can have like an arch there. Uh, something cool that just makes that transition a bit more beautiful. And of course that we're going to have the counter space to one side and to the other side we would have the dining room. Uh, so yeah, it's all brainstorming of ideas. And I think this way of just sketching very quickly for the clients is a very useful and a very powerful way to really just translate your design ideas to your clients and really just come up with the best uh, solution possible for them. And finally, um, if you want to go the extra mile, I would recommend you to do also some sort of like a flow chart or just uh, mark how the circulation would be in your new proposed space. So I always like to do this just to make sure that things are gonna work you know like if you are entering home and then you would be walking towards the kitchen or towards the living room uh, how would that path to those areas would be like if something looks odd or if just the path to those areas is not feeling okay then you would probably have to change the furniture layout uh, you want to make sure that your house or the project that you're working on uh, flows correctly you know you want to make sure that you have like this very natural flow within the house and within all the spaces and that the furniture is always at the right places okay so the very last part of this tutorial is the text so I just want to show you what I would do so you can use the text tool if you want and it's a very useful tool because you can actually choose 
from many different fonts uh, here in Morfolio Trace. So you can see how you have many different options to choose from. You can also change the size of the text. You can change the color and just make it um, very custom to your needs and to your likes. Uh, or you could also do freehand text, which I honestly do most of the time. Uh, I normally just like to use the pen to do everything, like even for text. This is a very personal thing and you can just try whatever works best for you. Uh, when I do freehand text, I will still create a new layer for my text. Uh, so again, remind yourself to always create a new layer uh, for the text that you will be adding. You can also drag your text to wherever it belongs. So for text, I would definitely name all of my rooms, like the kitchen, the office, the living room, just, you know, to kind of like make sure that uh, my plan is being represented correctly. This is kind of like a rule of thumb for interior designers. But I will also sometimes add some annotations that I consider important for the project. So if I feel like something needs a bit of an explanation and it's hard to understand just with the drawing, then I will definitely add some notes uh, just so that the clients can uh, understand better what I'm trying to tell them. So this is really my workflow uh, for a floor plan. Um, this is a very beginner approach to creating floor plans. There are many other ways that you can uh, make this floor plan look a bit more professional. You can do rendering for your floor plan and there are literally a million options that you can uh, use to make this floor plan way, way more professional. But I will be covering that in future tutorials here on this portfolio uh, series tutorials. So I hope that you learned something new today and that you are able to use all the tools that I've showed you for your own process. If you have any questions, you can drop them down in the description of this video. So bear with me because there's more tutorials coming your way. I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.